Hi, this is Rolf Sluis, co-founder of Verizon. It was known as Zen Cash when we founded it. Here to talk to you about sidechains, and not the detail about how we're going to implement the sidechains. Our software architects and developers have been working on that for almost a year now, and we're getting close to being able to put it into production. So what I wanted to talk about was what I think is a little bit more interesting, which is the applications that we can run on the sidechain. So to do that, I'm going to go through this little agenda on the video today in a not very technical way and talk about briefly the sidechain overview, uh, review the, what a blockchain is because a sidechain is a blockchain, and then go through my application design methodology, uh, which is pretty straightforward in how I look at software, and, and it can be applied to a lot of different things. Then talk about some Horizon sidechain apps and how we would specifically implement them. And this will be escrow, which is a nice warm-up app to discuss. And node tracking and payment, which we certainly want to do in a decentralized fashion. Voting, an important part of governance. And then Zen money transfer for a little easier and quicker money transfer app. So that's the agenda. We're going to go over uh, these things in order. And hopefully it shouldn't take too long. We'll do follow-up videos for people that have questions. Now, because a sidechain is just a form of blockchain that refers to a different blockchain, let's review what the properties of a blockchain are and what goes into it so we can think about what we can do for applications and the limitations and um, good things we can do. So blockchain is just a block of transactions, and they're created every certain amount of time. They refer back to the previous block, uh, which makes them a, a chain, and they're secured with a hash function. So it's very easy to do a hash a mathematical operation of all the transactions in the block and see if it's been tampered with in the past. Now, the transactions that are waiting to go in the block are in a memory pool. Every node uh, or block forger, uh, this is a proof of stake blockchain that we're talking about as the first design for uh, the sidechain. Um, it's a, not a proof of work. Uh, so those go into the memory pool, and then at a certain amount of time, transactions get put into the block, and they're hashed. So that's the basics of a blockchain. We'll talk about how a side chain differs from a blockchain in just a minute. Um, but when we get to software architecture, software is pretty straightforward in my book. So you have a database, which is a large amount of data. Think of an Excel spreadsheet with multiple worksheets, and the cells uh, point to each other. So most software these days is a database. And then there's permissions. So who has permission to view the database? Who has permission to update the database? And who's got permission to change the database structure? And then there's a user interface to the database. So a lot of different software is built that way. And blockchains are no different. So in this case, the blockchain is the database structure. Uh, anybody can view it. And in the case of Bitcoin, for example, only the uh, entity that solves the hash problem is able to provide an update to it. And then the developers are able to change the structure of the database. Same thing with Horizon, same thing with uh, the sidechain that we're going to talk about next. Here's how I'm going to show how the sidechain with Zen works in conjunction with the main chain. So what I have here is blocks, and we start um, in older time and going to newer time as we go down. This one in black. I have the Zen main chain, you know, our proof of work main chain with blocks averaging every two and a half minutes. Now here, I've got a side chain. Now side chains are, it's just a blockchain, so very similar to, uh, it runs on nodes. And in the case of the first side chain, we're gonna base it on the Ouroboros proof of stake model. So it's gonna have block forgers. And it's simplest to think about the side chain as having the same approximate timing as the blocks on the main chain, but they don't have to. And that can come in handy as we'll see later. So a side chain is a blockchain plus the ability to do forward transfers and backward transfers from the main chain. So what's a forward transfer and a backward transfer? All right. So say we want to transfer Zen from the main chain to the side chain. This is why we have to uh, update the Zen code to accept forward and backward transfers. So these are different types of transactions. And when we create a forward transfer, we actually take whatever value is in the Zen chain, 
make it unusable, but also at the same time create an IOU so it can be returned back to the chain in the future. We create a corresponding transaction on the side chain that uh, has the Zen value over on the side chain. So this is a forward transfer. A forward transfers are pretty straightforward. And of course, our architects uh, have referred to the uh, you know, original side chain paper by uh, Adam Back and other uh, folks who have added on to the uh, side chain uh, knowledge. And forward transfers are pretty straightforward. It's the return transfers that are a little tricky because we have to do a few things on the return transfer. First of all, make sure that we don't exceed the amount of Zen that was transferred in the forward transfers. You can see we have a couple of forward transfers in red here. And the return transfers, or the backward transfers, uh, they overall can't exceed uh, the, the amount of Zen. So we're gonna have 21 million Zen overall, and you know we wanna make sure that we don't have any just created out of nothing. So that's part of what the uh, developers have been spending their time working on and testing to make sure we have a nice uh, consensual Consensual way to do this. These purple lines are where the side chain blocks refer to main chain blocks, and they're able to do that uh, to get things in order and also uh, verify information. It doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one correspondence. If the timing of the side chain is faster than the timing of the main chain, we can have multiple blocks referring back to a single block. So, um, yeah, like the side chain can be proof of stake, distributed proof of stake. You can have different rules, different timing and it needs to reference the master chain. And we gotta protect the main chain. So this is the uh, things that we have to do. We have to be able to define the forward transfers and the backward transfers, and then have a side chain uh, that we develop, and then create a software development kit for the side chain. So that's the, the big picture on it. There's a, there's a lot more detail and implementation, but for the understanding of how side chains work, this is, uh, this is the way we're gonna approach it. And back to my software methodology previously, so this is the new database, and we're going to run an application that interfaces to this database. Uh, and there's going to be different uh, elements that have the ability to view it. So it's going to be a viewable uh, database. Of course, we'll have zero knowledge proofs in it so that we can uh, use the same type of, or we can do shielded or uh, protected information within the, the side chain. But I'm just talking about the basics for now. Uh, and then we'll build applications to interface with this side chain. In fact, some of those applications are going to interface both with the Zen main chain and with the uh, side chain. Of course, we can have multiple side chains running. Now, each of these side chains needs to run on nodes. And that's one of the big advantages of using a side chain as opposed to turning up a whole new project. What we found when we started Horizon back as Zen Cash was the most important thing to do when you create a new cryptocurrency project is to create it in such a way that people actually care that it exists. There's you know, thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of cryptocurrency projects, but many of them people don't care. So we have a established cryptocurrency project. We have great proof of work mining. We have an outstanding community. We have applications. We have backers. We have a uh, presence on, um, on exchanges. So the, the Zen token has value. And furthermore, with the nodes that we put in place, the secure nodes and the super nodes, we have many servers ready and willing to operate these sidechain applications. And there's, uh, in order to incentivize people to run sidechain applications, there's going to be a, uh, a way to compensate for that. Small compensation, but compensation nonetheless. Let's talk about how an escrow app on a sidechain would work. So first of all, you got to think of the actual application interface, which is going to be on your mobile device or something else. And you would want escrow, for example, if you're going to order something from somebody over the internet who you haven't done business with before, and you want to send them Zen, but you don't want them to get to the get the Zen until it actually shows up in your hands and you know it's what you what you ordered and agreed on. So that's why you use an escrow. Uh, so in this case. Um, we're going to have an escrow side chain, and that's all it does is it does escrow functionality. And usually, uh, escrow works great. Uh, sometimes you need to engage an arbitrator, um, and there's people that are always willing to be arbitrators in different transactional situations that can investigate what's going on and make a decision. Uh, and so, part of using this escrow service is to uh, 
agree that you're going to be arbitrated if there's a problem. So as we proceed through, uh, I talked about this earlier, uh, how these go down in time. So the buyer sends 100 Zen to the escrow application. And so it, the escrow application provides a Zen address. So the buyer sends 100 Zen to the Zen address. And then the escrow application does the special forward transfer transaction that moves it from the Zen chain and makes it no longer available to be used on the Zen chain and puts it on the escrow side chain, which I just put an ESC here for. When we call this, uh, we'll say it's transaction number five or escrow um, usage number 5032. Okay, so again, there's buyers, sellers, arbitrator, and then certifying nodes. And I'll talk about certifying nodes in a minute. So the seller sees that the money has been put in escrow. The seller goes ahead and ships the item. It goes through and gets to the uh, gets to the buyer, and the buyer sees that there's a problem. So in this case, uh, instead of just accepting it and uh, having the money sent to the buyer, the seller says, hey, there's a problem. I'm going to engage an arbitrator. The arbitrator gets in, figures out that part of the shipment was missing, and so uh, the seller and buyer agree that instead of reshipping the missing part, he's just going to get some the buyer's just going to get some money back and keep what he's got. So uh, at that point in time, all the conditions of the escrow uh, contract have been met. So you can see how we're doing kind of a smart contract thing here. And then the 100 Zen that's on the side chain then gets returned. So the application creates a transaction that uh, is validated by the certifying nodes as a proper way to return Zen to the main chain. And in this case, the Zen is going to get returned to four different addresses. So the certifying nodes uh, are going to get one Zen, which they split up between them. The arbitrator is going to get three Zen because he had to get involved. Normally you just get one Zen. And the buyer gets eight Zen back and the seller gets uh, 88 Zen. So you can see that the side chains would be a very useful application for escrow services. And the nice thing about doing it on escrow server, uh, on a side chain is, like I said earlier, we got a whole bunch of nodes that can run it. We got block forgers, and we can update this application uh, or, or the uh, the side chain quickly and add features without having to, to disrupt the main chain. Okay, let's talk about how we're going to do a side chain for secure node tracking and payments. So this is an important side chain because right now we do this in a centralized fashion where 10% of the new Zen that gets created gets divided up amongst all the secure nodes that are operating that meet all the qualifications. And the qualifications are, the stake address has to have 42 Zen, it has to stay up and running 96% of the time, and it has to be able to respond to a challenge, which is to go deep within the blockchain, find a transaction, hash it, and create a shielded address or a shielded transaction on the Zen main chain uh, to uh, show that it has the complete blockchain in its possession and also that the, it's powerful enough to create a shielded transaction. Is that the test that we'll end up using uh, for this side chain uh, distributed tracking and payment? I don't know. I think it'd be a good idea, but we might come up with a, a better way to do it. However, the way we're going to do the tracking uh, and payment is we're going to set up uh, a period of time. So 720 blocks is going to be the epoch, epoch being fancy word for period of time. And during those 720 blocks, uh, directly from the Zen chain, we're going to do a forward transfer of 10% of the new Zen that's created that uh, to the side chain, which gets accumulated in funds. Now the onus is going to be on the secure node tracking application to send the transactions to the tracking side chain uh, to show that it's valid, that it's registered, and it's meeting all its requirements. So these transactions will accumulate in the data structure along the side chain. They'll be, um, if they're valid transactions, they'll, the block forgers that are operating these transactions will put them in the side chain. If they're not valid transactions, then they won't. But the upshot of it is the uh, client that's operating on the secure node um, is going to register it, it's going to uh, create the transaction hashes, 
uh, for the next one, and it'll create the transactions that will show that it's up and operating, and also it'll create at the end of it um, a report saying it's met all the requirements and it's valid. So once all those things are created, then part of the application is going to be able to say, well, so much funds were brought in during the 720 blocks. There's this many valid secure nodes. So we can calculate how much each secure node is going to get paid. And then each secure node can send a transaction requesting that payment uh, to its stake address, obviously. And then those transactions will get turned into, um, uh, they'll get turned into not forward transfers, but backward transfers. So the value will transfer from the side chain back to the main chain. So that's how we could do a secure node tracking and payment system on its own dedicated side chain running on the super nodes. And we may end up putting, um, using zero knowledge proofs to hide some of the information in there. Uh, it depends on what the developers uh, figure out. Because in all these different uh, sidechain developments, we got to make sure that just because um, we provide an application that people can use to access the sidechain, we're also going to know that there's people that are going to be altering the applications or writing their own applications to access the sidechain in a fraudulent way. So we don't want to set up ways that folks can get their funds hacked or people that aren't actually operating valid nodes get paid and things like that. We've gotten a lot of experience here over the last year by running the secure node tracking and payment system in a centralized system. So when we build this application, we'll have all that experience that we developed by getting it going uh, early to put to use. Now let's talk about the voting side chain. This is great because we actually already had the voting uh, side chain developed as a, a research project with IOHK over a year ago and it was tested and it uses uh, so uh, designed in Scorex again which is what our um, our software development kit for sidechain applications is going to be primarily done in. Uh, it's been tested and, and verified. So we have a great starting point to operate this chain from. The only thing we're doing, instead of operating on the main chain, we're going to operate it on a side chain, which is no big deal. So let's take it as, as an example here. When we're going to have a vote, it's going to be a one month voting process. So in this case, we don't need to have blocks every two and a half minutes like we do on the Zen chain. We might only need to have a block every 10 minutes, every 30 minutes, something like that. And we're gonna have an application that's a voting application. Perhaps it gets integrated into Sphere. Perhaps it's a standalone application. This application will have a Zen address on it. So you can put uh, uh, send funds to your Zen address in your application. And it's gonna have the ability to let you uh, make voting decisions on it. So um, during the first month, the anybody that wants to vote in the upcoming vote gets to say, hey, I want to vote, and they send their Zen. Oh, and the first few times we do this, we probably need to cap the amount of Zen just so we see what happens. Maybe we cap it to one Zen or 10 Zen or 100 uh, Zen. With a lot of these applications, we'll start them as a minimum viable product, which means we have the basic features operating then we get it going, and then we add features as it progresses. So um, that's the way we get things to market and try and see what works and what people like and they don't like and what features are important to uh, add and what potential security issues they are. It also gets us uh, to market quicker. So that's a great way to do uh, software. So people register to vote and send Zen. So that's a forward transfer here, as I'm sure you're familiar with by now. Week two, people are going to campaign because there's going to be different sides of the voting issue. I'm actually looking forward to this part of the horizon process because there's going to be many different people that are going to be campaigning uh, for what they think is the right way for people to vote. It's going to be very exciting. Uh, week three, then there's going to be voting in the app. So then when the vote actually happens and... This is all done, of course, same way a lot of other blockchain stuff is done with public and private keys. So you have a private key that allows you to sign transactions and 
uh, but the public key people can, you can give that to folks or it can be used to generate a public address on the side chain. There's a different one that's used for the Zen main chain, of course. So you sign your votes and send that in. Now, the interesting thing about using zero knowledge proofs is we can have a true secret ballot. So the votes are going to get recorded, but nobody knows, even though they have access to this blockchain and they can analyze the information in the blockchain. If it's in a zero knowledge proof, and they don't have the private keys to be able to view it, then they're not going to be able to do it. So how will the system actually be able to view the vote? Well, that depends on how the zero knowledge proof is constructed, how the zero knowledge proof circuit is constructed. And not there's not just a private key and a public key. There's the possibility of creating a viewing key or a transaction key or it might be written into the system uh, that uh, some other key will become available or held in a zero knowledge proof. Anyway, there's a way, because I know we, it, was already, uh, it was already written that way, to be able to reveal the results of the vote there at week four. So first three weeks are the preliminary process. Week four, the results of the vote are revealed. And at that point, they're published and the Zen is sent back to the people that are voting. So that's the way the voting system was originally designed. That's what our starting standpoint. Are we going to want to possibly set it up so that uh, secure node or super node owners can vote as well? Yeah, that would be great. Um, right now, from the initial standpoint uh, that we have, not to say that we can't change the design, but the initial standpoint is that people put Zen on the side chain to be able to vote. Uh, maybe there's something that we can do there to um, give a valid address on a secure node and super node tracking system saying you can have either your 42 Zen in a uh, Zen address or on the sidechain address. So I'm not really sure how we're going to deal that. I don't need to have all the answers. Um, and we've got a lot of smart people that can help figure it out. But anyway, that's how we would do a voting side chain. Again, this would be a different application, a completely different side chain, but this is one of the foundational uh, applications that are part of the distributed governance system of Horizon. So that's why it's going to be run on Supernodes also. Okay, those other application app examples, they were good. They were good to provide an introduction to some of the applications that we can do on side chains. And who doesn't need escrow? And obviously we need to have secure node tracking and payment and voting, but Here's an application that I think is going to be really useful uh, for the general population. And I'm going to I call it the Zen Money Transfer app. And the way I think of it and the features I like to think of it, I just use the short term of Zenmo. So it's going to be a mobile app. You're going to have a Zen address. So you can send uh, funds to your Zen address on your Zenmo app, maybe from a shielded uh, wallet. So it just kind of shows up in there. And then you're going to have a Zenmo address as well. Now, first thing we want to do in this sidechain blockchain is map our Zenmo address or, or our Zenmo addresses, if we use an HD hierarch hierarchically determined addresses. We want to map it to a username. So, for example, mine might be mapped to BlockOps and Rob's would be mapped to FinPunk. So that if I wanted to send um, Rob some money, uh, not to dox him here, but I would send... I would Zenmo him uh, to FinPunk, and that would be the type of application. Now you can see these Zen blocks are spaced farther apart. They're still two and a half minutes, but since we want Zenmo to go in a hurry, we can do uh, 10 times as many blocks or 15 times as many blocks in the same period. So we have like 10 second transactions getting put into the blockchain. And that's a, that's a crucial part of the aspect here. So when, if we have a fast block time, which we can do on a side chain, because we don't necessarily have to keep all these transactions forever. Maybe we just keep them for a month. Maybe at the end of every month, uh, we'll revert any of your Zenmo back to your Zen address and restart a new blockchain. Or maybe we'll construct it so that's got transaction cut through, so it's a much smaller blockchain. There's a lot of things that we can do with the side chain uh, for our Zenmo app that we wouldn't want to necessarily do on the main chain. And uh, settlement is when it actually gets recorded in a block. So um, it would happen 
that the transaction would happen quickly and it would get settled quickly. So like within 10 or 15 seconds. And that's the kind of performance that we're looking for. And we can make these big blocks so we can handle lots of transactions. So right here, we would have a second layer that would sit on top of the Zen blockchain that would be useful for payments. And we start out with person-to-person -person payments because that's the easiest to turn up. But we have all sorts of future improvements that we can add in there. And I mean, you think about what you might want for future improvements. Well, it can be silly things or it can be important things. For example, we could do shielded addresses. Heck, we could even implement Mimblewimble or any other type of uh, uh, privacy uh, feature on the side chains. We could do transaction backups. So in your uh, little app on your phone, you could back up your transactions so you can have a record of all your transactions. Perhaps there's an avatar that you'd like to tie it into, maybe a rainbow unicorn or something that pops up whenever anybody sees your username. Uh, messaging. Hey, I'm sending you this money for the t-shirts that I bought because I like t-shirts. And merchant point of sale integration. Yeah, person to person is nice, but what if we want to integrate it with a merchant? Or what if we wanted to set up recurring payments? That'd be nice. Or what if we don't happen to have any Zen and we download the Zenmo app? Wouldn't it be great to be able to just put a credit card number in and have it automatically buy some Zen and drop it into the Zen part of our, our address? So there's all sorts of other things that we can do. Heck, even ATM integration so you can be your own Western Union. And so I think the Zenmo app is, again, something that would be a different application. It would be purpose specific. It would run on side chains. And the block producers and the uh, folks that are running the Zenmo sidechain application and the certifying nodes, they would all get small percentages of the payments. And we transfer Zen to Zenmo, and then when it gets transferred back out, or maybe when it gets transferred in and out, uh, each of those elements that are running the sidechain get a small portion of it. And this is great because you don't have to have a trusted intermediary like a bank or uh, some kind of centralized application developer, and it would be available all over the world. So that's four examples of sidechain applications. I'm sure with the creativity of our community, people come up with a lot more applications. And probably the best way to start doing these types of things is to uh, define the specifications, uh, put it up there somewhere, and then have people start contributing to it. As soon as we get our sidechain application software development kit, then the developers can start developing these applications. We can test them in a sandbox, get them played, and then turn them up on testnet, and then start running them on the side chain um, as well. So I'm very excited. And these are just the person-to-person -person, uh, applications that we're talking about. We're not even talking about business uses of side chains. And that's frankly, that's why uh, Horizon Labs is in existence. Horizon Labs is in existence to serve business customers, just like Red Hat. Uh, made it easy for p p businesses to use Linux because with Red Hat, you could call and get support and have projects and other things like done and integration to existing software. That's what Horizon Labs is going to do. Horizon Labs is going to develop sidechain applications specifically for businesses that, that are you know, custom developed and going to provide support and design and all the other things that businesses expect. I'm really excited about sidechains. I'm glad that they're gonna, they're, they've been making a lot of progress and work on them and uh, looking forward to seeing what the creativity of the different applications are that are out there. Thanks.